Hi everyone, this is Maverick for the Chemistry Guru. Now in chemistry, there is a very important type of reaction called redox reactions, where there's a change in oxidation state or oxidation number of species. Now it has important applications in H2 chemistry, like topics involving redox titration and electrochemistry. So of course, a very fundamental component is we need to be able to determine the oxidation state or oxidation number for elements. So in this video, we want to spend some time to define oxidation state and oxidation number and learn how to determine the oxidation state and oxidation number for common elements in compounds. Now the definition of oxidation state or oxidation number of an element inside a compound, it depends on whether if it is an ionic compound or simple covalent compound. If it is an ionic compound, then the oxidation state of an element will just be the charge that the ion would possess inside the ionic compound. If it is a simple covalent compound, then it will be a hypothetical charge that the element would possess if it were an ion. So let's run through this with a few examples. Now, as mentioned previously, if we talk about an ionic compound, then the oxidation state of the element or the oxidation number of the element would just be the charge that the ion will possess inside the ionic compound. So we have two very simple examples here involving sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, of course, is an ionic compound. We know that it consists of Na plus ions and Cl minus ions. And the charge for sodium cation will be a plus one charge. So therefore, the oxidation number or the oxidation state for sodium in sodium chloride will be a plus one oxidation state. Then for Cl minus, the charge of Cl is a minus one charge. So the oxidation number for Cl in sodium chloride will be a minus one. It is actually a very simple and straightforward issue of identifying the charge and the oxidation number will just be equal to the charge. Na plus, oxidation state is a plus one. Cl minus, oxidation state it is a minus one. Another example, magnesium chloride is made up of Mg2 plus cation, Cl minus ion. Same thing, the oxidation number will follow the charge. Mg, it is a two plus charge. Oxidation state for magnesium will be a plus two. Cl, it is a minus one. Oxidation state of Cl would be a minus one. Now, how about simple covalent compounds? Now, for simple covalent compounds, the oxidation number for an element would just be the hypothetical charge that it would possess if it were an ionic compound. So we need to bring in this idea called electronegativity, which is how much an element would like the electrons inside this covalent bond. So an element which is more electronegative what you will do is you pull the electron pair closer to itself inside the covalent bond. So let's have some examples to illustrate this. If I talk about HCl, we know that this is a simple covalent compound. Then what we need to consider is if I look at this HCl bond where there are two electrons being shared, but the sharing of the electron is not an equal sharing because Cl is more electronegative than hydrogen. So what Cl would do is it will pull the electron pair closer to itself, which is what I've indicated here. This dot cross, this dot will represent the electron from hydrogen. The cross will represent the electron from chlorine. And as mentioned, because Cl is more electronegative than hydrogen, you pull the electron pair closer to itself. And the consequence is actually Cl will acquire a overall partial minus charge and hydrogen will acquire an overall partial positive charge. Now, if I were to convert this to an ionic compound, which is effectively, I have to break this bond and I form ion involving hydrogen and I form an ion involving Cl minus, what will happen is when I break this bond, the electrons will be given to Cl because it is already closer to Cl. The consequence is hydrogen will now be a plus one charge because it is losing its electron to chlorine then Cl will acquire a minus one charge because it will have taken this electron which belongs to hydrogen. So what will be the charge acquired if HCl were an ionic compound? If HCl were an ionic compound, hydrogen will be a plus one charge. So therefore, there will be the oxidation number for hydrogen. It will be a plus one oxidation state or plus one oxidation number. Cl will acquire a minus one charge. So therefore, the oxidation state or oxidation number for Cl will be a minus one. Now, how about Cl2? Now, Cl2 is actually not a compound. It is an element, right? Involving chlorine molecule. But let's just run through the idea of 
oxidation state and defining oxidation state and we apply this to Cl2. Now same thing, I have this Cl-Cl bond and because there's no difference in electronegativity, because they are the same element, so what happens is the electron pair will sit exactly at the center. And if I were to convert this to an ion and I were to break this covalent bond, because this electron pair is exactly at the center, so therefore there will be an equal breaking of the bond. So if I break this bond equally, this chlorine will take back its own electron, it will take back this dot. This chlorine will take back its own electron, it will take back the cross. So I will end up with something like this. I don't really get to form ions because there's no unequal sharing of the electron. When I break the covalent bond, each element will take back its own electron. So therefore the charge acquired by chlorine atom, in this case, will be a zero charge. The other chlorine will also acquire a zero charge. That is why when we consider the oxidation state for elements like metals such as sodium, magnesium, aluminum, and for non-metals such as carbon, halogen, Cl2, F2, Br2, I2, oxygen O2, nitrogen N2, the oxidation state for all these elements would be zero. Now because electronegativity it is a fixed property of elements, so therefore we can actually make use of that and we do certain conclusions involving the tendency for a certain element to possess a certain oxidation state or certain oxidation number. So we can actually remember some of these guidelines or some of these tendencies to better help us determine the oxidation state for elements inside a compound. So the table is here. If I want to determine oxidation state for common elements inside compound, then we have this table involving elements, the oxidation state that it tends to have, and whether there are any exceptions. Now for metals, the oxidation state will always be a positive value. It also depends on the valency. If it is a group 1 metal, oxidation number will always be a plus 1. If it is group 2, oxidation state will always be a plus 2, and so on. And metals will never take a negative oxidation state because metals can only undergo oxidation. It can only lose electrons. It can never undergo reduction. It cannot gain electrons. So there are no exceptions involving the oxidation state for metals. Now for fluorine, because fluorine it is the most electronegative element that we have. So inside the compound, fluorine will always take the electron from somebody else. So the oxidation state for fluorine will always be a minus one and there are no exceptions to that. Now for hydrogen, hydrogen, the tendency is the oxidation state would be a plus one unless it is bonded to a metal. Now this table is actually sought according to priority. That means the higher you are inside this table, then the higher priority that you have. So in this case, if I look at hydrogen, hydrogen tends to be a plus one, but if it encounters another element which is above this table, then you have to give priority to the metal because metal is listed first. Because metals will always have a positive oxidation state. So if I have a compound form between metal and hydrogen, which is what we call a hydride, then the oxidation state for hydrogen must become a minus one. So under other circumstances, hydrogen will always be a plus one oxidation state. Unless it is bonded to a metal, then hydrogen will take a minus one oxidation state. Then when we look at oxygen, Oxygen tendency is to take a minus two oxidation state or oxidation number unless it is attached to fluorine, which has no exception. Fluorine is always a minus one oxidation state. So for this specific compound, OF2, then because fluorine will take a minus one oxidation state, then oxygen will have to take a plus two oxidation state in OF2. Another exception involving oxygen will be a hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide H2O2, hydrogen oxidation state it is a plus one. So oxidation state for oxygen will have to be a minus one. Now of course we have other common elements, but usually this table will be a good start. We need to be familiar with the common oxidation state for these elements stated here. Then usually what we do is we will use all this as a reference. We fix the oxidation state for metal, fluorine, hydrogen or oxygen then we use this to deduce the oxidation state for other elements inside the compound. Now let's have a few examples. The first example is ammonia NH3. Now as mentioned, what we try to do is we try to fix the oxidation number for one guy first. In this case, what we will do is we will fix 
the oxidation state for hydrogen. Hydrogen is always a plus one unless it is bonded to a metal. So I know that the oxidation number for hydrogen will be a plus one. Then if I have three of them, the overall oxidation state for the hydrogen will be plus one times three. And the oxidation number for nitrogen will be an unknown value. Maybe we call this X. And if I add up all the oxidation number for the elements inside this compound, it will be equal to zero because if it is a molecule, the overall charge is zero. All the oxidation number, when we add them up, it will be equal to zero. So if this portion here, it is a plus three, so therefore X must be a minus three, right? So the oxidation number for nitrogen will be a minus three. And of course the oxidation number for hydrogen will be a plus one. All right, next, how about OCl2? Now for OCl2, the reference should be oxygen. Oxygen, usually it is a minus two oxidation state, unless it is bonded to fluorine, then you'll take a plus two oxidation number. Or if it is bonded to peroxide in H2O2, oxidation state for oxygen will be a minus one. So in this case, I will fix the oxygen as the reference. Oxidation number for this guy, it is a minus two. Now how about the oxidation state for chlorine? If it is an unknown, I can let it be X. I have two Cl here. So therefore the oxidation state for this guy, I need to multiply this by two times. And when we add up all this oxidation number together, it should be equal to the overall charge of the species here, which is a zero since this is a molecule, which is neutral. So therefore minus two plus X times two will be zero. So if we solve for this, X should be equal to plus one. So minus two plus two, be equal to zero. So the oxidation number for Cl will be a plus one and the oxidation number for oxygen will be a minus two. Now let's have one more example, calcium carbonate. Now for calcium carbonate, how can we handle this is, this one is an ionic compound, right? But it is made up of Ca2 plus and CO3 two minus. So maybe we can split them up in this way first. Calcium, I can split this to Ca2 plus carbonate is CO3 two minus. So these two ions will made up calcium carbonate. And if I look at Ca2 plus, then the oxidation state for calcium will just be the charge of the ion. Oxidation number for calcium obviously will just be a plus two. So this is easy. The next thing we have to figure out is CO3 two minus. Now for CO3 two minus inside carbonate, we still have covalent bonds. So what we do is we will have to further split these covalent bonds. If I split this up into the individual ions, then what will be the hypothetical charge for carbon? And what would be the hypothetical charge for oxygen? Now for oxygen, it becomes the reference, same as the previous case. Oxygen, it should be a minus two oxidation state. And I have three of them. So overall oxidation number here will be minus two times three. And I know that carbon has an unknown oxidation state, so I just let it be X. And if I add up all the oxidation number here, it should give me the overall charge of the anion, which is a minus two. So therefore I can try to solve for X in this case, X plus minus two times three is equals to minus two. So therefore X should be a plus four because plus four, then minus six will give me an overall charge of a minus two. So therefore we know that the oxidation state for carbon in carbonate will be a plus four. Oxidation state for oxygen will be a minus two. Of course, oxidation state for calcium will just be a plus two. All right, so that was the discussion involving determining the oxidation state, or oxidation number for elements inside a compound. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.